So we are just getting ready now for our next set of um, presenters from the Department of Education. We have Waipahu High School and actually Heather Chapman is our um, state level transition coordinator and she's going to introduce our speaker here. And then after that, we will have a panel for more time for questions, okay? So go ahead, Heather. Hey everybody, I'm Educational Specialist for State Transition Office. I'm so honored to um, present Principal Gary Chun from Waipahu High School. He's going to describe his amazing work-based learning um, program at Waipahu, which is a model for the state. So welcome, Gary. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ooh, I hear chickens. <laughs> I'm actually the Academy Principal of uh, Ohana of Excellence Academy and actually an assistant principal for the whole school. Yes, Gary Chan, and I'm gonna talk about uh, work-based learning at our academy. Um, where is my slide presentation or do I just present? You can present on your own if you need oh, to. Okay. I also have it if you need me to present for you. Okay, wait, here it is. Everybody can see that or? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Hold on, yeah. Hmm. Share screen, there you go. Oh, can you present for me? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Let me pull that up Thank for you. you. Yes. All right, here it is. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, so Ahana of Excellence Academy, uh, we are a model academy, the only one in the nation that is uh, a special ed one. Uh, we got model status uh, in 2020. And our students uh, do not earn a diploma, but they earn a certificate of completion, yeah? Next slide. Okay, so about OEA, um, we have a total of about 80 students, nine teachers and 10 EAs. Next. Okay, that's our vision and mission. Uh, mainly to support our students to the highest potential, depending on their needs. The mission is that uh, we, in partnership with stakeholders, provide innovative hands-on learning op opportunities. Okay, next. And our journey, you know, has grown tremendously from 2020 until now. And about a year and a half ago, we came up with this uh, academy framework uh, for our academy. When you look on the left-hand side, that's that's the pathways that we have. I'm gonna explain Max X program and competitive and the core classes and the three training centers that lead up to the ready to work program, uh, which we provide through a work uh, outside provider, workforce transition center. Okay, next. So our journey, uh, it has been an ongoing a uh, journey for us. Uh, I challenge my my staff to you know bump it up every year, and you know we had tours, schools coming for tours, and we just had one a couple of weeks ago with three uh, schools. And the neat thing was one of the teachers who came to visit two years ago uh, shared at our debriefing that, wow two years ago to now, you guys are really uh, bumping it up. But yeah, it's an ongoing uh, challenge to my staff and they're they're awesome. It takes a whole village to make this work. I can't do it by myself. It, it, it's up to the, the, the staff that are EAs and even our board members uh, that are uh, helping with our, our goal, our mission and our vision. Okay, next. And uh, it's all about not just paper, pencil type of work for reading and math, but it's, it's about the skills that they need uh, to gain in order to go where they need to go based on their needs, based on their IEPs. Okay, next. 
Okay, so max X pathway is basically our medically fragile uh, class. And uh, they more than likely gonna end up in some type of uh, adult uh, daycare uh, when they exit out of uh, our school at age 22. Okay, next. So when, when you say max X or what kind of work-based uh, learning that they do, they do things like recycling, gardening, and cooking, you know, next. And the next uh, pathway is called program. Next. Program, these uh, students actually, you know, when they exit us, more than likely they're gonna uh, end up in some type of a uh, program that ha that is assisted. And if, if they can do better than where they're at, we move them up to competitive. So let's look at what they do for the program people on regarding WBL. They do uh, char charcuterie and all these things that they uh, market and sell to um, the school is basically sharing and selling to our staff members only, yeah? So charcuterie that they uh, provide, uh, next, they do Ohana sweet treats. Next, newspaper delivery. Next, uh, let's go past all these. Next, next, car wash. And being independent means living one's own story every day. And, you know, with these students, I, I know uh, Heather went to visit those, those classes before too, yeah, on tour. They they have a character that is <laughs> it, just unique, and when people see those kids and what they're doing, what they can do, they're they're simply amazed. Like, wow, I didn't know they can do these things. But these are the skills that take a long time for them to uh, accomplish and, and and move on. Yeah, and some of them succeed and move on to the next level, next pathway, which is called the competitive. Okay, next. <laughs> So a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, when you come and take a look at our kids and what we do here at White Palm High School, it, it's just amazing. Everybody's just amazed at what they can do from the max X level to our competitive level. Next. Okay, so our academy framework, as you can see the arrows going up and down from max X program and competitive, they go up and down based on their needs. And then from competitive, they move into core classes where they touch upon financial literacy, employability, and health and hygiene, yeah? And that leads up to our three training centers, sort of like uh, vocational centers, yeah? Which they develop skills, more skills. And we have three, and one of them is called Kane Bookstore and Printing, where we have embroidery and uh, silk screening. And Kane Cafe, we uh, are sponsored uh, by Duncan. They provide a lot of our materials, equipments uh, that we can market to our, our staff. And the last one is Kane Services, where they do building maintenance and lawn services um, skills that they work on. Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. So competitive training centers. And our logo is called Kane Cafe, Kane Services, and Kane Bookstore because Waipao used to be a sugarcane plantation town, right? And that's why we named them that. Okay, next. Here, here's Kane Cafe. They do orders. And like I said, they're, they're uh, sponsored by Duncan. Uh, they provide a lot of uh, coffee, tea, and, and donuts, and bagels, and all that too that they... Uh, sell to the staff on Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's a Google form that I sent out uh, to the staff and they order on a Google form and they do those delivers on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And another thing that's added, which uh, recently is called uh, Cane to Go, similar to like uh, Uber Eats. So they go to a certain, uh, like, the, like yesterday, they went out to Cooney's, which is around you know, close to in the White Power area. And same thing, they do a Google form. They, they have the staff choose and these kids go out and 
uh, collect money. They also email to the teachers that your cost of their meal is this much and we're going to come and collect it on Wednesday. So they do a lot of uh, introductions and communication along the way for what they do. And also, you know, counting change back and forth. Yeah. Next. Competitive Pathway King Cafe. Next. So this is King Cafe, uh, King Services, where they built a pergola uh, last year uh, with the help of some of our people from the Workforce Transition Center. Uh, they also laid out a bocce field where they uh, take care of the grass. They put the sod down and they're working on uh, building that field. And right now, presently, there's a huge uh, lily koi uh, plant that's covering that, that pergola. Okay, next. All right, next. And then this is our bookstore. Our bookstore screen printing. That's what they're doing right now. And uh, next, next. So that's the King bookstore printing, silk screening, uh, embroidery. Now, when I say WBL alignment, when you have Max X doing recycling, cook, uh, cooking, and planting, it kind of channels up to one of the three cane training centers. You know, like recycling. Oh, that's more like a, you know, like bookstore when they're collecting cans and sorting and all that. When they're doing cooking uh, type of uh, uh, lessons in the classroom, that's connected to cane cafe. What the, what they do there, and they do planting, which is related to cane services. With program, they do car wash, tie-dye shirts, planting, Aloha Fruit Fridays, newspaper delivery, and charcuterie. And all those WBLs that the teachers do in their classrooms connect up to those uh, one of those three uh, cane training centers. Okay, next. Next slide, please. Okay, so now after the cane training centers, if they are ready, hopefully by 11th and 12th grade, we form them into this ready to work program, anywhere from nine to 12 students, okay? And these students already are in the ready to work program and they work with our uh, consulting uh, business, which is made up of uh, retired principals like Randy Higa, Allison Higa, and Claudia Nakachi, and they're former DOE uh, employees, retired DOE employees too, that help us. Okay, next. So they get assigned to based on what their interest is and what they want to do. These are all entry type level uh, uh, businesses because they're going to take a chance on them by training them. But what we do at uh, Ready to Work program, the school itself look for funds to pay these students a minimum wage to get trained by those uh, businesses. And hopefully at the end of their training, the businesses do hire them. And when they do hire them, then that's where our, uh, our support on, on the, the stipends, student stipends gets cut. And we're happy that in the beginning of this school year, we had three students, two at McDonald's, one at Duncan, got hired full time and with medical benefits too. So we're like, whoa, that was quick. <laughs> but that, that's our goal. Okay, next. All right, so that, that, that's where you see ready to work. The, that leads to an outside service provider, which is the Workforce Transition Center. And those people really, they do class time in the first quarter twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. And by the second quarter, they get placed at a, a business and they come back for uh, Wednesday classes so that they can continue to look at how they're doing in, this, in those businesses. And they, they bring up all types of scenarios to share and work on those skills, okay? Uh, they go out to work anywhere from three to four times a week. They don't come to school at all. They just go directly to work and that, that's their... Uh, class time uh, during uh, the regular work week. They just come once a week now on Wednesdays. Okay, next. 
So that's the Workforce Transition Center. Next. And these are just the uh, resource and development uh, of why we build something like that. Um, when we put students out with regular ed or regular normal people, they're more successful, you know, uh, working in that type of envir environment like McDonald's or Taco Bell or, you know, Dunkin'. Uh, when, you, when we go and visit, you can't even tell who our special ed students are. Uh, and, and, and that's good. You know, that's what we want. We want them immersed with the, the general public. Okay, next. And with Workforce Transition, Transition Center, we have a lot of partnerships with the community business, businesses. Outcomes are to innovate, impact, and inspire, you know. And those kids, they feel good. When they come once a week, they feel really good and proud that they're making money now. They're being successful. And they help out with the other trans, uh, kids so that they can get them enticed to, hey, get into this program next after you're, you're finished with the training center. It, it's, it's neat to see. And the parents are very proud of what's going on too with them being successful. Because, you know, if we tell them to just go out and apply and try to get a job, it, it's hard. A lot of businesses won't take the chance. Yeah. So we have to build something like this, uh, a program like this to, to be successful. And getting an outside agency to help us uh, is a key. I, I can't see our teachers doing what the Workforce Transition Center does. It, it's very difficult. Uh, there's a lot of networking and follow-up and uh, visitations and supervising along the way at those businesses. Next. Okay, so this web, uh, this these slides are, are shared with you. And this is a seven minute video. Take, uh, hope, hope you can have some time to go take a look at that. Okay, next. And you want to find out more about what we do and our academy, you can click on these QR code. And now I think that's it. I did pretty good. I got two minutes to spare. <laughs> You did awesome, Gary. I have to say, he had 37 slides and I was like, you have 20 minutes. And he's like, I'll get through them. And you did it and, and yeah. very well too. Thank you. What a wonderful program. So we have um, a few minutes here. If anybody has some questions in the chat, I know that folks were, there was stuff flying furiously in the chat, but we mm -hmm. do have a few minutes before we go to panel. If we want to ask some questions here. Sure. You guys ready? <laughs> yep. Okay. This is now. This is what I gathered from the chat. They just love. Let me start with this. I'm gonna decipher there are like seven questions. Start from the very top. Okay. You're being, they just love your program. They give you all your kudos for your area. I mean, the schools that have been coming to visit our tours that that's a key to market this program is not just through social media or instagram and what i learned from our conference for the national career academy coalition back in uh, november we did a presentation presentation there marketing is really you know the face-to-face -face coming to tour talking story there and when they do come and they see our kids and they see our classes and they see what we're doing like they're just like, wow. And then the word gets out. But I always tell them, you know, it, you can't, it's hard to replicate the whole thing because this is a journey that's ongoing. But if you can take bits and pieces and start from somewhere, because in the beginning, when I first started there, um, about six years ago, our WBL, our work-based learning program, that one activity for all nine classes was just car wash. and doing car wash for all nine classes, teachers finally realized, you know, my kids are better than that. They can do this, they can do that. Some some classes like the Max X, they can't really do much with car wash. So I tell them, told them, hey, it's up to you. What can they do? What kind of skills can they build? And they went off after that. Right now, today, we have uh, about two or three program classes doing car wash. Everybody else is doing different things. Okay. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Chung. Um, one of the pro one of the questions is: Is this a magnet program? Can any any of them attend from other districts? They would have to do a GE, you know, because you know it, it's difficult to uh, be a magnet. I mean, I would love to, you know, head that direction with all the schools, but I don't know what the big plan is for the DOE regarding magnets. Uh, it, it, it makes sense because all the mainland schools are like that. And I realized when we visited the mainland schools and why there's no other uh, special ed program that has an academy like this, I realized because all of them are magnet schools and a lot of the special ed students that we have, they're in special ed or special needs type of, of, of schools. And that's the reason why we don't see anyone doing that. 